Hey there guys, alright, today we are watching something new, one that I saw while I was looking for Warhammer videos to watch, and I was like, ooh, a fan film I've not been recommended, and then I looked at how new it is, and I'm like, whoa, it's a brand new fan film, so hell yeah, I'm gonna watch this, this is The Awakening, I believe it is some Space Marines versus The Awakening uh, Necrons, which, let me tell you. Y'all know I am a fan of, like, the Necrons. Actually, really, it's seeming like anyone that has a green color scheme in the Warhammer 40k universe, they are my favorites. The Salamanders, the Orcs, of course, and the Necrons. Uh, if they're green, I like them, apparently. Which, and you, you know, I am drinking an undisclosed green drink. But I also have some water on the side here for when this runs out, because this is a long video, so... Depending on how much yapping I do, I'll probably be thirsty. <laughs> Anyways, um, links to the creator, of course, in the description box below. I'm not going to try and pronounce the last name because I don't want to, like, embarrass myself and say it super confidently and get it really, really wrong. So go follow them. Their name down there. So, yeah. Anyways, let's go ahead and uh, fucking check this shit out. I am excited. I, I am a fan. I love fan films. They are really fan creations of any franchise I'm a sucker for. Um, just because I, it's fun to see those interpretations of people that are not the creators of said product, not not the official creators of said product slash a universe. So, anyways, enough of yapping. Let's dive in. This product is an unofficial, non-canonical fan animation created by amateurs. All right. Yeah. Covering yourself legally. Very good. Oh, that's sweet. That was so wholesome. Already a ton. It is the 41st millennium. Oh. <laughs> nice voice. 10,000 years ago. The Emperor of Mankind launched the Great Crusade, reconquering the galaxy in humanity's name and establishing his interstellar imperium. Okay, we're going with the sci-fi trope classic uh, for movies and stuff, of uh, giving us, like, a voiceover prologue sort of dealio. Love it, love it. I love that trope. However, those old days of might and glory are long gone. A civil war broke out between the Emperor and his favorite son, Horus, bringing mankind and the galaxy itself to the brink of destruction. And although the Imperium emerged victorious in the end, the damage it suffered was irreparable. Ever since then, humanity has become stagnant, slowly withering and decaying towards an inevitable end. Regardless, its power remains considerable. Millions of worlds, trillions of citizens, vast armies and navies, all held together by... Again, that's... Okay, we're using a uh, super historical... Uh, I see one from Scotland up there. Um, Holy Roman Empire. Obviously, I believe that one is most typically associated with Richard the Lionheart. Is that what... Obviously, widely associated to the... I think the... Um, sigil of the royal English family tree. I don't know where these others are from, though. By war. In this dark and distant future, they're nothing but war. Billions of souls hold the line day after day, fighting against the Emperor's enemies, the forces of chaos and their dark gods, the many races of alien invaders, and humanity itself. Every day, millions fall for his eternal glory. One of the most powerful force in the Imperium is the legendary Adeptus Astartes, the Emperor's own angels of death. To the common populace of the Imperium, they are known as the Space Marines. Once humans, now demigods of the battlefield. Okay, so far, based on what I understand to be the scope, like, right, this is... Space Marines versus Tyranids. Um, now, of course, this could there could be things lingering, happening on the side, uh, character arcs, and perhaps even references. So far, 
this is a very this feels like a pretty long prologue um and i don't know how necessary it was to establish the Horus heresy at the beginning um here like obviously right this is one of those this this is me coming in here as someone that is not a fanboy of warhammer 40k and simply trying to speak on you know sometimes right there there are a lot of um right try try and looking for things that are not you know are not entirely necessary for the story being told obviously if warhammer 40k fans are probably going to get on my ass and say like no the horse heresy must be mentioned here i'm as of right now i'm not feeling like mentioning the horse heresy was all that important in the prologue like I don't feel like it establishes anything, any information that we really need to know, and it runs the risk of being too much for the audience to try and digest, to establish within the world. Looking at it, trying to look at it from someone who is, you know, not at all exper experienced in the Warhammer 40k world, right? Um, which is typically, right, prologues are for establishing people who are unfamiliar with the setting into the setting really quickly that is what voiceover prologues and sci-fi fantasy are for okay um and so right now unless right in this conflict between necrons and space marines we have the space marines talking about it or like we're on a planet or like some in some way something about the horse heresy is involved in in a significant, semi-significant way, then yeah, that's fine. But if it's really just kind of there as like a lore, here's lore kind of thing, one of the things that's unnecessary, and it's one of the things that I struggle with a lot in writing. I, I have, I'm a part of a local writers group in my hometown, uh, um, and what I thought was a really solid chapter one, after turning it in, getting feedback from them, I realized really quickly, especially based on their feedback, because they all were saying this. Too much info dump, too much world building was in the first chapter. Overwhelming with information, even though I, the author, felt like, hey, I feel like I'm weaving this in pretty well so that it's very digestible. No, 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 no. But anyways. Genetically altered with added organs and implants. But. For instance, this information that we are getting on the Space Marines, specifically here, genetically, genetically altered and whatnot, this is vital information that we should be uh, told here in this prologue. So this is great. This, Raised this is great. and trained to be warriors who know no fear, no remorse, and no fatigue. Salamanders! Clad in Sorry. majestic power armor, proudly bearing the markings of their chapters. They wield a deadly arsenal that even the darkest horrors lurking in the depths of the galaxy cannot stand against. Twenty legions there once were. Out of these, small chapters gradually arose and disappeared, among them the direct descendant of the first legion, the Dark Angels. Brave, proud, and unrelenting, they pursue their goals. Whatever. Okay, yeah, I'm going to be talking a lot here and i am not sorry um uh so here we got the information on there being 20 legions um there once were i think personally um to stoke curiosity in the audience in wanting to learn more about the world i think actually yes we sh horus heresy information in this prologue should have been cut and so cut out the horus heresy bit have largely the rest be unchanged here so then like there once were 20 legions so that question is lingering like what happened what happened what happened obviously there are the two legions that were killed before the horrors were wiped away before the horus heresy and then the horus heresy but like you know one of those things where it's like again of course it's dependent on how important the horus heresy is going to be to the story being told in this fan film if it is important to the fan film, then of course it is information that should be lightly established here at the beginning. But again, if it's not, right, like, I think it's one of those things where, like, 
leave what ha so, like uh, the ominous what happened to the space marines right um cuz really now that like this is a good line it's like 20 20 space marine legions there once were and you're like ooh what happened and then you remember oh just a couple minutes ago they said there was a civil war so you know right like I don't know. One of those things where my taste of, like, kind of wanting about how I want audiences to be curious about certain things. That's how I would write, like, my my taste of it. Um, what I think is a bit more, what I find to be more engaging. Of course, you know, this is still really good. This is just me. Again, I'm being extremely nitpicky here because I enjoy being nitpicky with storytelling. That's what I find to be fun. <laughs> Whatever the cost may be, this is one of their stories. Amazing. This that was a that was an overall great intro. I'd give it we're gonna rank it out of ten. Eight out of ten intro. I think that was a I think that was still a very solid prologue. Um so yeah. I think it established the vibes of the universe really well. Without saying the the stereotypical line in the grim darkness of the far future there is only war or whatever. Without they didn't say that line. And they I feel like they still established the vibes of the of the setting really well. I am yapping so much. <laughs> Imperium men, edge of the segmentum ultima. The Nutta system. Nuta system. High world. Red Omega 3. Great shot. Great cinematography here. Love the colors. I'm a sucker for an asteroid floating on by really close to the camera. I love that stuff. Is Again, I find that that's a sci-fi trope a lot of the time. And I love it. It's one of those it's just one of those cinematography tropes for sci-fi, I think, is perfect. Oh <laughs> hold on. I feel like every single Warhammer film we've seen that has a, a, a space shot, they do this. Cause I feel like we saw this in another one of the fan films. And I'ma eat it up every time. This shit is good. <laughs> I love this shit too. Wait, hold on. Were there mini ships coming out? There are... Are, th are those smaller? Yeah, there are, like, ships coming out of the sides of the bigger ship here. I love this shot because also it establishes, like, this really the size of multiple things at once, right? We have a star. We can roughly gauge, like, oh, stars are very massive. And then we have this ship here that is taking up a pretty sizable portion of, like... We don't build machinery this big in our world. Now, of course, will people like, um, like this establishes size here for the ship. And then we also have movement here, a smaller craft helping again to establish scope and scale of things happening. Love it. <laughs> Love the sound design so far. It's like a muffled sort of sound design vibe. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Always a sucker for the space marines being in darkness and you're only able to see the light from their like eyes. That's always neat. And I love these shots here establishing kind of what a you know a forge world or a hive city kind of like the vibes of a hive city. This is this is really great establishing shots here for our setting.
And of course, a sucker. I love it when the camera fucking shakes when a space marine walks by. Very subtle. They do it just once when the space marine is super close to the camera so that it's not happening like every single time a space marine steps. But it it is a subtle thing that establishes the weight of that Fantastic. Also, I want to establish, I'm not going to, like, talk about, like, animation, re like, the quality of the animation, because this is a fan film, um, um, so, like, I'm not going to be, like, and obviously I'm not artistic in that sort of way, I can't create what they, they create, so I'm just going to be, like, looking at it from a, I'm really only going to be analyzing this from, like, a storytelling perspective and not at all, like, from the, um, I don't want to say quality, because, again, I feel like that's a stupid word, but, like, um, I don't, I don't know how, like, it doesn't look, like, it, I don't know what I'm saying, I, I think you guys understand what I mean. Like, the moon, like, one instance, like, being... The animation is a little stiff on the Space Marines, but, like, that's not important to the story being told, I feel like, right? And again, also, because it is a fan film, they aren't going to be able to do everything probably to the, uh, at least if, <laughs> if they're like my brain, not get it to the perfection, like, if they wanted to get it as perfect as could be, uh, um, as fluid as possible, this would never get released, right? Um, so you gotta you gotta settle for some things coming across as stiff. And I think I think it's fine. I think it also it does also uh, help establish really kind of the weight of a Space Marine as well, and the armor that they are wearing is like clunky armor. And I love the, I do love the dynamic movement here because a lot of the time, um, in fan films, I feel like uh, we see a lot of characters that just stand like pretty still. Um, but no, they they have these characters like kind of moving at all times, feeling like alive in a way. We are here, tech priest. Ah, Captain Ramiel, my. Apologies. I have been running prognostics, and you have arrived 10.5% earlier than expected. Hmm. Situation report. Are they truly awakening? Indeed, Captain. The information leading to your arrival was not false. The energy spikes that have been disrupting our networks the typical frequencies pulsing through this world's crust. It is most assuredly an awakening. How come no one noticed anything over all those past centuries? A Necron tomb right beneath their feet. How come one does not notice a malignant tomb growing in their own flesh? That's a good line. That's a good line. Right, like, one, it's a, we have the Space Marine asking the question that the audience is likely going to be ask, asking themselves internally. And then immediately the Tech Priest uh, relates it to something that the wider audience can understand, but also at the same time fits within the world of 40k. Beautiful line. Great line. Symptoms may occur long after the onset of the disease. How large is the dynasty? Unknown at this point. However, by the grace of the Omnissiah, we have arrived in time. Awakening protocols are long and complicated, and this one is still in its early stages. They are yet vulnerable. Captain. Our sensors have picked up signs of battle during our descent. The Imperial Might seems to be on the move. Indeed. 
local Astra Militarum units have assumed defensive positions. And the Aeronautica Imperialis has been carrying out preventive strikes in the enemy rear. However, several regions are already beyond our reach, and our forces are slowly losing more ground, despite their best efforts. We must stop this cancer in its tracks, or face the inevitable. Just tell us where you need me and my brother's priest. The Emperor will take care of the rest. As I have said, Marine, we need to stop the growth from spreading. A surgical cut performed at the right place at the right time. And then continuing the tech priest motif. I don't know if motif is the right word for this. Well, I'm going to say, I'm, <laughs> we're, we're sticking with it. Uh, continuing the tech priest's motif of, of, of a tumor, of a malignant tumor, and, and dealing and talking about one, how they got to be there unnoticed, and how they are going to deal with them as a threat to the Imperium. Good writing. Oh, and we beautiful. Ought to be your scalpel. Is there a better tool for this operation other than the Emperor's own angels of death? The great Astartes. Ah, Captain, my calculations are complete. Transition. In a race against time, reinforcements and pre-prepared defensive positions will be necessary. It will not be easy, but all is not yet lost. These pylons are the main means of transfer from the tombs to the surface. A quick and effective route, and an abominable tech heresy, of course. It might seem the pylons are easy targets, but their protective fields and firepower Make them the very opposite of that. However, I have been oh, I just noticed the baby is moving. I hate this. Been able to perform thorough scans over the past several days to see how the energy flows converge into nodes. And I have found a particularly large one. Deep underground, I assume. Indeed, yet still reachable. What will we gain from destroying it? Time. The pylons will be weakened, making strikes against them 85 to 92 percent more effective. The enemy's progress will be hindered, and there is a 12.3 percent chance of starting a chain reaction, which could spread to other energy nodes. This could delay or even halt the awakening protocols. Very well. So, what is the catch, priest? The success probability is 22.2315%. I have faced worse odds. And this fact has been reflected in my calculations, Marine. I suggest a small strike team, composed of your very best. Are your men ready for such a task? My brothers are sharper than a blade, priest. I will give you the courtesy of not doubting your calculations. You may return the favor by not doubting me and my brothers. As you wish, if possible, your team... Love the rising music. Oh, this is fantastic. ...she include a brother who communes with machine spirits. His experience will be invaluable when activating and delivering the nuclear warhead. One of your Thunderhawks would be the most effective mode of transportation. It will increase the chance of a successful insertion by 32%. Very well. The flight path 
crosses several locations with enemy forward positions. Oh, and I'm a sucker for this means of, 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 of I don't know what the technical, what the technical writing filmmaking term would be, but where they're, where they're just discuss, discussing the plan. And at the same time as it's being discussed, we are getting shown the, our, our protagonists making progress going through that plan at the same time so that we are not just getting dialogue, but we are also getting action at the same time and a, a true feeling of forward momentum. This is so good. <laughs> We're only 11 minutes in. <laughs> they know what they are protecting, Captain. Instruct your pilot to be prepared for evasive maneuvers, which he will be most assuredly fired upon. Several diversions will be created while you are en route. Success chance, 35.8%. And now, the critical point counter. Your machine must pierce through the upper layers of the crust in order to gain access to the tube containing the load. By his grace, the bedrock in this area has eroded over the past millennia, and underground water currents have created a cavernous network which can be navigated. Daring. Correction, Captain. Foolish. However, success is possible. 30.2%. And what then, priest? When we reach the tomb? Then it is up to you, Captain, and the Omnisire's will. Find the node. Destroy it. By and I love that. Establish, like, so that we don't know the plan. Which means our space marines are going to succeed with incredible loss of life. The cog. Who knows what awaits you in that forsaken place? Revenge. Again. Establishing shot of a new of a new scene of a, of a, of a Necron tomb. And, oh, this is fantastic! Love the sound effect, sound design. Ah, <laughs> and then the difference between the the tech thing and and the Space Marine, the weight of the Space Marines. Again, y'all, I'm just glazing this <laughs> this video, <laughs> this fan film. signs of contact yet can you catch something the space around us is enormous my senses cannot reach its end it is confusing the tech priest was right there is a wave of strong energy currents here enemies none in our vicinity it seems good focus on those currents and follow them to the node strike team to thunderhawk we move out Set up here and hold this position. Emperor willing, we shall return soon. Very well, Captain. The Emperor protects. We move forward, brothers. Ugh. Oh. I love the wide shots. I am a fan of wide shots. Oh, even wider. <laughs> Again, establish a great use of establishing scale of the. F oh, damn. Ooh, a moving wide shot. Peter Jackson style. <laughs> That's cool. It is setting a vibe so effectively. Oh, yes, this is creepy. This is, ah. Uh. So good.
<laughs> Hate that. It's dead in here. Almost like a tomb. Huh. What are they anyway? In my long duty. I've met them only once, but I noted scraps of those who seem to have more experience. These I have analyzed. With this, and the knowledge provided by the Adeptus Mechanicus, I can only say this. Beware, brothers. The Necrons are a dark, cursed race. Ancient. It is the abomination of the machine, in the face of the Omnis Sire. The past of their empire is not exactly known to anyone. Empire. Oh, yes, brother. Indications are that eons ago, the Necrons ruled vast swathes of our galaxy. Sounds almost like a fairy tale to me. Can they be killed? Everything can most likely be killed. Although their shells are preserved, despite millions of years in hibernation, they are not immortal. And what awakens them? I have no data on that answer. And I thought you knew everything, Brother Glorio. Let's say... Almost everything. Great, great way of, uh, they're not using too much dialogue, but they're doing, like, the dialogue that is here is establishing the characters of our different space marines pretty effectively, I would say. So this is, again, continue to glaze. <laughs> Oh, creepy glowing water. Love it. Isn't that one of those things in the uh, Astartes fan film that I watched? Don't touch it. What is it? I don't know. But it's old. Ancient. And something tells me that it wants to be awakened. Copy that. Returning to formation. Great shot. Great cin Oh, fantastic. <laughs> oh, man. I've had one critique so far for this fan film. That's it. It's just a small thing. I think I need a bigger bolter. <laughs> I am picking up strange signals. Where? Everywhere. They keep appearing and disappearing all around us. The growing sense of dread. Oh, this is so good. It makes no sense. Should I focus on them? No. Keep following the path to the Nexus. Stay vigilant, my brothers. The enemy is watching. Let them come. Growing sense of unease. Oh, this is so good. Ugh. Brother, watch out! Alpha 
four. For the Lion Brothers! This action, it's good. This is good. Like, even though, so, I thought I wasn't really going to speak too much on it, but, like, I feel like, what, so what they're doing, and I think it's great, this is fantastic, right? Like, the movement of the Astartes here, I don't know, maybe, maybe it was something that, did come from an animation or maybe it was a purposeful choice from a storytelling perspective to have them move stiffly i don't know right but like the animation here of the of our space marines is they move a little bit uh they are a bit stiff in their in their swinging and in their movements um and how the how they are countering that to make them move smoother uh, make it make it feel like they're moving faster than um the animation is showing is that they are also moving the camera or having the camera shot angled in just such a way and having it move with the action to make it feel there's more impact it, it's fast oh this cinematography here is fantastic See, like, let's let's watch watch the movement of his shoulders corresponds to the movement of the or well the where the stabbing where the uh, Necron is stabbing the camera is like kind of punching like angling in slightly, it's moving with the movement like it's like that that right here that right here. Hold on. I went too far back. Like right here. Camera follows the stab. And so he's now off center. And so it's helping just the overall movement and speed of the action while still also making it able to be followed. Easy to follow. It's just so good. <laughs> Oh, so Captain. So we're going to lose one of our brothers in this fight, or are they all going to survive the first contact? The tension is feeling like something's going to go wrong here. Uh oh Okay, no, we haven't lost a brother yet. Xenos. Is it all of them? He said the no. lot. The signals are fading. They are retreating. Very well. We push forward. Move. That was a great action scene. Short and sweet. Um, I feel like it came in at just the right time with the right amount of build up for it. Obviously, it isn't like the full weight of uh, of the Necrons, but like I th great early uh action great great action scene I like that shield I like this man huh. What was that a bug just one wait another 
<laughs> oh. Run. What? There are always more. Move quickly. Running from a few bugs. Are you out of your mind? We will crush them. This is a fight we can't win. It's too late. Ugh. Oh. Such good cinematography. They are so good at establishing scale. I love this film. By the Emperor. That's not good. I don't think that's gonna do anything, buddy. Activating mobile defense platform. <laughs> I love it. Is something gonna go wrong with this wheel? It's Fred. Oh, that's good. That's so good. I love this. I'm just gonna keep blazing this fucking film, man. Uh oh. This is a trap. Apparently. But it may also be our salvation. Set up the warhead, brother. Guard the entrance. Strike team to Thunderhawk. Do you hear me? Strike team to Thunderhawk. Come in. Thunderhawk distracting. The box is all scrambled. What is your status, Captain? We are sitting on several megatons of Imperial Fury, surrounded and unable to move. Do you need reinforcements, Captain? I can send the brothers to aid you. No. You will hold your position as ordered. I need you to relay a message to the cruiser. Understood. I will try to circumvent the jamming. You may speak now. Captain Remiel to the Lion's Claw. We are at the node. The secondary objective has been achieved. The primary objective is unreachable at this point. We are at an impasse. Stand by for further updates. Glory to the lion. Remiel out. I do not like this. I would rather face the enemy instead of blindly pressing a detonator. Do not worry, brother. You will get your share of fighting before this is over. It is ready, Captain. But I must confess, I am puzzled. Logic dictates that destroying the node must be our primary objective. And yet, your words suggest that. Captain, I did not mean to. It does not matter. The enemy has trapped us here, thinking we would not detonate the warhead while we are still here. Negative, Captain. 
Available data suggests we have only encountered an automatic defense system, while the tomb itself is still dormant. The closing of the door was just an automatized process, not a deliberate intention to trap us. If I am not wrong, and I really am, I might be able to open it. That's cool. That's a good set shot, too. Well, will it work? Bless me, Holy Omni Sire. Messiah. This is incredible. The technology is ancient and yet incredible. Hennessy, be ready, my brothers. Wait. Are you inside? Inside their system? Yes, Captain. It is so cold. No machine spirit. An endless sea of information. Every second is agony, Captain. Lion's courage, brother. This information, what is it about? Everything, Captain. They have been monitoring the planet and the surrounding void. Millennia of continuous data. The surface, the weather, the climate, the orbit, the warp anomalies. That's it. Secure this data, brother. Download it. What? The data. We need it. It might be invaluable for... the Imperium. Captain, that would be against every code and creed. I cannot. That is an order, Tech Marine. I will take full responsibility. And these brothers are my witnesses. The data, Tech Marine. Secure and download every piece of information for the past 10,000 years. Now! That's a lot of information. Wakey time? Or is it just the ominous lights? Oh no, are our brothers at the at the ship gonna be in trouble? This was not my order, Gloriel. It's not me. The system is reacting to my presence surrounding me. The pressure, Captain! Oh, that's double not good. They are awakening. Oh, so our captain made the oopsie. So good. So fucking good.
Well, I think one of our brothers will be dying soon. Fucking dome, dude. Brother! Brothers, no! Fucking go, tech dude. Techno, whatever the fuck you are. This is flow moving so well. Oh, all this builds. I, ah, I'm just gonna keep blazing this bell, man. Oh, what the fuck is that? Something that that's not good. Oh, 
Oh, elite Necron. Yep. Oh, brother, no! Two brothers down. Gotta go fucking off and take them all out. Where'd the other uh, two Nephons go? That should be healed. Brother, can you hear me? <coughs> he needs an apothecary. No! I need a weapon. <coughs> it's just a flesh wound. I can try cauterizing your wounds. Just help me stand up already. Nope, heroic sacrifice for the funny guy. happening now. Cool. Hell, 
How is this possible? The Brother Librarian felt an urgent need to help you, Captain Remiel. Do you still have the data? I do. On my second cogitator. It seems it is indeed very important. It is invaluable. To the Imperium? Yes, to the Imperium. Get your team men back to the Thunderhawk. We will cover your move. Thomas, uh, Brothers Tom of Deathwing, let's show our enemies the meaning of the fury of the Fence. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Thumb things up. Energy readings are changing. Get me the lion claw. Remiel. Brother Librarian, thank you for your help. Of course. You have obtained something very important, Remiel. I hope so. Our brothers fell for it. Our brothers fell for our redemption. And their glorious sacrifice will be remembered. Hmm. I will personally place their names in our eternal halls. Please, summon the inner circle, brother. This is another step in our path. It really is, Remiel. Big step. I'm Times are coming that will shake the Imperium and the galaxy itself. When we regain our honor and glory as the First Legion, I can feel it. In that case, we must be prepared. Wait for my arrival at the Claw. But for now, I have unfinished business here. Is that so? You never forget, brother. Yes, and I never forgive. The fallen must repent, and my brothers will be avenged. But, huh? Ah. Uh. That's what he was meaning. All right.
Throw a sl- Oh, I'm gonna cut the slow-mo short. Beans. Oh, that's a cool, that's a, that's a cool title screen. That's really cool, I like that. No spoilers. So good! So good! Literally... I think some of the line delivery had me... was a little weird with the, um... Um... When the reinforcements came and they were like, Hey, uh, this is important to the Emperor Empire. Then that one dude kind of paused that he's saying, like, Yes, to the Imperial... Like, I mean, the way it was, it, it was delivered felt like there was something more there, like something was off. But then ultimately here, there wasn't anything off, I guess. Um, so, we're going to let the credits here play. Uh, it, just, it deserves it. It deserves it. Oh, man, this was... But a nerd. This was, I think, this is my favorite of the animations, uh, fan films, that um, I've watched so far. Um, it did not feel like 50 minutes. This, this was, this was really good. It, it was so, it was well paced for what it is. It was perfectly paced for paced for what I, what it is. Um, it moved so smoothly that, like, it really felt like 20 minutes, but no, over an hour has passed. Like, that's so good! Oh, this is my, yeah, this is my favorite of the, uh, fan films that we have watched so far. Um, this is, I have nothing to say but with glaze. I, like, except for, like, so ultimately, the statement about the Horus Heresy, I think, was unnecessary, and I think does contribute to being a bit too, like, if you are someone that is not familiar at all with Warhammer 40k, coming into it, and then hearing them talk about the Horus Heresy, and then it's not at all mentioned or whatever throughout, like, it doesn't seem to play any import to the story, or at least they don't really say anything for the general audience. For a general audience to understand why the Horus Heresy was mentioned, um, I think that's just too much world-building uh, info dump at the beginning. There, I think could cut that out and just have it be talking about like the creation of the legions, and then as I was saying earlier about the um, how there were once twenty uh, 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 Astartes legions, um, and I think that would have been perfect and still still really really fucking good it's just that's one of those things where i i noticed it and i'm just like as a as someone who is not a big warhammer 40k nerd as someone who is probably more representative of a general audience uh person you want to try and grab perhaps for warhammer for a warhammer 40k film um for me it kind of is, is like too much information coming in and I don't think it was all that necessary. Like, again, is it is it cool information? Yes. Is it necessary? No. Right? Um, so I think ultimately it was one of those things where it's like, probably could have cut it. And I don't think, I don't think anything would have been lost with uh, the l mention of the Horus Heresy being uh, uh, happening. I think just cutting that line, it doesn't take away anything. And I think it enhances it more. But again, um, with the line of the there were once 20 legions effectively uh we'll have people wondering like oh what happened to the other legions or whatever like why are the astartes the way they are now or whatever right like sort of thing um and then a couple of line delivery delivery was a little i found a little weird as if it was insinuating something that i'm not too certain was being insinuated by the writing itself Right, like it kind of. There was the way one of the lines. It just kind of felt like our the a start the space marines that we were watching were about to be betrayed by those other space marines. 
or whatever, or they were going to have their memory forgotten because actually they weren't supposed to go and get that information or something, um, or they want that uh, data completely wiped from history or whatever. And that's kind of the vibe I sort of was getting, but ultimately wasn't there. I don't know. Ultimately, this is my favorite of the fan films that we have watched. This was fantastic. Go check it out yourselves. Um, but yeah, go go support the original maker. They have fucking this is amazing. Anyways, yapping done. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next Warhammer 40k video. Peace.